with the new season in production now set to hit Paramount Plus, hopefully in 2021, do you have any predictions just generally for Discovery season four? The main thing we have, I suppose, is the trailer that they they put out a couple months ago. I guess the main takeaways of that is that they have colorful uniforms now and, and they're dealing with a, a gravitational anomaly. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's going to be another season of like, oh, there's this big uh, space anomaly that's causing a lot of problems. It, it seems a little repetitive of season three. So I'm kind of hoping this is just something they, they deal with early in the season and they didn't have like footage of the later stuff to put together in the, in the trailer. I'm I'm all here for Discovery. Obviously, we started this podcast right when Discovery kicked off, inspired by it. And you named and, and the podcast after it. We named the podcast after it. And we've been loving it all the way through. But I think um, something that you brought up uh, a few seconds ago is it's concerning me a little bit. Um, you know, in, in modern TV, obviously, we have the trope of the and, and film. We have the trope of the MacGuffin and the trope of the mystery box like the J.J. Abrams mystery box. And the MacGuffin obviously is, you know, like in Guardians of the Galaxy or, or Avengers, it's a Tesseract. It's a thing everybody's chasing, right, trying to get. And that kind of is a, the, the engine of the story. And the mystery box is just a mystery you have to solve. And I think Disco, like a lot of other shows, has for two seasons, um, season two and season three, maybe a little bit in season one, has combined those two where we get like a MacGuffin mystery box or we're chasing something throughout the entire season. And there's also a mystery around it that we have to figure out what it is or what the details of it are, or where it came from. Like in season two, we had the, the red angel. We're chasing the red angel. We're trying to figure out where it is and where it's coming from. And then the mystery was, what does it mean? Right. And in season three, obviously we had the burn and Let's let's chase the bird and find out its origins. And then uh, the mystery was what made it start and can we reverse the effects? So we're always kind of chasing some kind of MacGuffin that's out there in space. And this season, it seems like there's this odd gravitational anomaly showing up randomly in places that makes everything all um, Christopher Nolan-y, you know? Mm -hmm. And we have to figure out what it is. So again, it seems like you know, we're chasing a MacGuffin and we're, we have a mystery box. And I think largely like if those, that type of storytelling to be successful for a lot of people anyway, the resolution of that, the, the unraveling of the mystery and the locating of the MacGuffin has to be impactful and has to really pay off and be emotionally satisfying. And I think we've, it's kind of been, for a lot of people, I think, and me included, the last two seasons, the the sat it hasn't been that satisfying. Like in season two, we found out the Red Angel was kind of Burnham's mom, but also kind of Burnham, and it was a little muddled. And the payoff was just kind of muddled. And then um, in season three, I wasn't a huge fan of of exactly what caused the burn. And I do think the show does strive to like connect those resolutions to those mysteries to character. Like obviously in season two, um, the red angel being tied to Burnham and her mother and how much of a huge emotional thing that was for Burnham was, was, was a good idea, but I don't think it resolved all that impactfully. And the same thing with, um, with season three, because the fact that it was uh, an alien from Kaminar who was going through this emotional trauma gave Saru some agency to become something of a mentor and a helper. It didn't really land. So I don't know if we're, we're going to go down the same road this season or not. How do you feel about that type of storytelling and how Disco has kind of, uh, kind of led us down that path the past couple seasons? Well, I, I agree with uh, everything you're saying, and I definitely understand, you know, the criticisms of those season finales being a little disappointing. That's one of the risks of doing this, this big season long arc is that if you don't have a satisfying conclusion, it feels like you know someone was telling you like a joke and it was like kind of funny and kind of goofy. You're laughing at it, but then you get to the end and you know the punchline just yeah. falls flat and doesn't land. You know, it, it kind of diminishes the entire thing, right? Uh, one of the things that I think might be causing that is that Discovery is a show that's always kind of been in a 
a state of flux. You know, you had a guy come in and develop it, Brian Fuller, and then he gets fired because he's also working on American Gods and he's not getting his Star Trek stuff done on time. So they, hmm. you know, they 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 give him the axe. Uh, they have some, his lieutenants in charge of it, and then they get rid of them and they bring in uh, Akiva Goldsman and Alex Kurtzman to have a bigger role. And you know, Akiva Goldsman wants to do like this Pike spinoff, so they start setting that up in season two and. At some point, they they decide that they're going to put Michelle Paradise in charge and and right. jump the ship, you know, a thousand years into the future. So what we're getting at like the end of these seasons is they're they're also having to set up the new direction they go in. You know, season two they they conclude the story with the Red Angel and Mama Burnham and all of that stuff. Where they they end it in a way so that they can put the ship in the future. And then you know, season three they they tell the story of like how, how did we create like this kind of post apocalyptic weekend federation uh you know we have the burn all the dilithium got destroyed and how that they they do it in a way so that they can get saru off of the ship and make michael the new captain because they they want her to be captain so it's kind of because like they're they're changing courses and they're having to end their stories in a way that that sets up their their new direction and i think that is instead of just you know, coming up with the the ending of their story and building towards that and kind of having it be its own thing and not worry about the next big change in the status quo of the show. I think that might be part of the issue. I'm hoping that eventually, now that they, they've had one consistent showrunner for an entire year, which hasn't happened previously on the, the show with Michelle Paradise, I'm hoping that she'll kind of do what Michael Piller did when he came into season three of Next Generation and kind of like really helped that show find its voice and... You know, if you go into season four, the next generation, that shows us firing on all cylinders, mm -hmm. uh, you know, similar to what happened on Deep Space Nine when Ira Stephen Bear took over in season three. And, you know, you get to season four and it's just like they've worked out all the kinks. That show knows what it's doing 100 uh, percent. And I think that that's something that I'm looking forward to in, scene, in season four now that they've, they've had time to fine tune the show, uh, what kind of stories they're going to tell going forward. You give me a lot of confidence now because, yeah, we uh, the episodes that Michelle Paradise um, was around for are really good. And the fact that we're going to get some stability finally with Disco is encouraging, right? And even <laughs> though all. throughout all the showrunner changes and all the behind-the-scenes changes, I got to agree with our, our viewer, Takako. I'm going to put her comment up here on the screen. I took the ending of Discovery Season 3 as an invitation to empathy. She's talking about, I don't remember the character's name, but it was uh, the Kelpian who uh, was responsible indirectly for the burn. And that was all rooted in that character's emotional journey, and it was connected to uh, Saru's emotional journey. So I think Discovery, even though it, it's gone through all these shifts in direction, seems like every at the end of every new season, like you said, we're getting a new show, and it, it feels a little unstable. I do like that it's seems like it's always been committed to the to emotional storytelling and character-based storytelling in terms of like that family unit we're getting uh with stamets and and his new kids and his his partner this show unlike a lot of other star trek shows is extremely character-based and is very interested in its characters emotional lives and i i appreciate that thanks again father for jumping on the pod with me tonight Remind us where we can find Text Trek. Sure, and uh, thank you for having me. But uh, you can find uh, Text Trek at uh, text-trek.com. Find us on YouTube. Uh, we're on Facebook. And you can also follow me on Twitter at TX Trek. All right. Everyone visit StarTrekPod.co to sub and follow the pod on all podcast platforms and YouTube. We want those YouTube subs, so please follow us there. Uh, just go to StarTrekPod.co for all the links. Also, again, if you want to join our private Trek fan Slack group uh, with Trek episode watch alongs almost every night with tons of awesome, positive Trek fans, go to patreon.com slash Star Trek pod and sign up at the $2 level. That's patreon.com slash Star Trek pod. Again, Fathery, thanks again. We'll talk soon. And everyone, thanks for supporting the pod. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Moody Garcia. Live long and prosper.